Hello everyone and welcome back to Introduction to Finance. Today I'm going to be showing one application of the bond price equation. So typically in Introduction to Finance or Principles of Finance course, you're going to see two types of bond problems. You're going to see, you're going to start off with ones with annual coupons, then you're going to build onto that and end up with semi-annual coupons. So the application I'm going to be showing you today is a bond with annual coupons. First I'm going to show it to you using the equation method. Then once we solve it using the equation, we're gonna use the time value of money functions in our calculator to solve the exact same problem. So if you're just interested in either the formula or the calculator version, I have each one of the video breakpoints linked down below. I'll also have this note sheet that I'm filling out throughout this video today linked down below as a PDF as well. So let's start off with the different inputs here. So first up, we have a face value of $1,000, three years to maturity remaining, a coupon rate of 5% and a yield to maturity of 7%. So first up, we're going to start off with a timeline and label each one of our cash flows. The one that's easiest to start with is going to be this face value. So if I were adding my face value to my timeline, the face value always comes at maturity. So I'm going to add my $1,000 to year three. Now next up, I need to determine the interest payments that I'm going to receive from this bond, which are the coupons for the bond. So we get the coupons for the bond from this coupon rate. So the coupon rate equals the annual coupon divided by the face value. So now what this tells me is I can take my face value, multiply it over here to the other side, to my coupon rate times my face value, and that will give me my annual coupon. So my annual coupon ends up being my coupon rate of 0.05 or 5% times my face value of $1,000, $50. And again, in this problem, these are all annual coupons, so that's gonna happen each year. Now I have all of my cash flows labeled on my timeline. So if I look at my equation, I want to figure out what the price of the bond is today or at time zero. So the price of a security today is equal to the present value of the future cash flows. So I need to take each one of these coupons and discount them back to time zero. And then I need to take this face value and discount that back to time zero as well. So I have to break this into two different equations. First, let's look at the $50 coupons. So if I have a repeating cash flow over a fixed amount of time where each cash flow is equally spaced, that's going to be an annuity. And I'm bringing it backwards on my timeline so it's present value. Then the $1,000, that only happens one time, so it's a single cash flow. And again, I'm bringing it backward on my timeline, so that's the present value of a single cash flow. So next out here, I have written the present value of an annuity equation, then the present value of a single cash flow equation. So let's start with the inputs for our annuity. First up, we need our coupon. So our coupon is going to be that $50 that occurs each year. Then we need an R value. So this is where you have to really pay attention here because the R value is what your discount rate is. It's not the rate that you determined the coupons with. So the discount rate in this case is going to be the yield maturity of the bond or 7%. So our R is our yield maturity, which is 7%. Then for our T, T in these annuity equations, I like to think of as your total number of payments or total number of coupons. So our total number of coupons here is one, two, three. So our T is gonna be three coupons, right? Or in this case, years. So now I can fill out that first term. Next up, I'm going to do the single cash flow. So for the single cash flow, first I just have my face value or the future value. 
So that's going to be $1,000. And I'm discounting that back three years at my discount rate of 7%. So now I'm going to solve each one of these, and what I end up with is for this first term here, I get $131, and I'm just keeping three decimal places there so it makes it easier to round my final answer, around $131. Then for my second term, I end up with around $816 and about 30 cents. So adding those two up, I end up with a bond price or a bond value of $947.51. So that would be the bond price that we calculated based off of these inputs using our time value of money equations. Now another alternative that people like to use is the graphing calculator functions because these are really nice built-in functions where you don't have to use the full equations. So let's look at our inputs here on the graphing calculator and figure out what each one of these are going to be. So first up, let's talk about where I got these inputs from. Where you find the time value of money solver on the calculator is you turn it on, then you go to apps, it's going to be the first option there, finance. Then again, the first option there is to press enter again. And now we have a time value of money solver. So I have an N, an I, present value, payment, future value, payments per year, compounds per year, and then beginning or end. So for a bond, let's figure out what each one of these means. So N is going to be just like your T in the equation up here. Then your I percent, that's going to be your yield to maturity, or like your R in the equations above. Now, an important thing to note here is that in the equation, you put an R in decimal form. In the graphing calculator or financial calculator, you always put an R as a percentage. So you need to put an R in percentage form present value, that's what we're solving for. So we're going to leave that one empty for now, right? So we're solving for that price or value. Payment, that's going to be our coupon. FV, that stands for future value. So in this case, that's going to be our face value. Payments per year and compounds per year, I never change on my calculator, so I always leave those as one and one. What I change instead are the inputs up above. For this case though, everything's annual, so you don't have to worry about it. And then the last thing you wanna check is that end is highlighted, not begin. So end means that each one of these cash flows happens at the end of each period, which is exactly what we have here. So now if I go through and fill in each one of these inputs, what I'm going to type in, my T is 3, my I is 7%, so I'm going to put that in as a 7. Present value is what I'm solving for, so I'm going to skip that for now. My coupon is $50, face value is 1000 And you'll notice I put both of these in as positive numbers. So now let's go through and type each one of these inputs into the calculator. So first up, I have three is my N. And after each number I type in, I just press enter. Seven is my yield. And remember, we want to put that in as the percentage. The present value, you can see that there's already an answer there. That's okay, you're just going to skip over it. So just press enter again. It takes us down to payment. The payment here is 50. And then face value, I already had a thousand there, but I'll just type it in again. <laughs> and then just to note again, that payment I've set to end. So end is highlighted. Now I'm going to scroll back up to present value and I want to make sure it's hovering there and flashing. Once it's hovering there, what I want to click on is the solve button, which is right above the enter. So right above your enter, it should be green solve. And the way you get it to solve is you're going to press the green alpha button then enter. 
And now we have an answer appearing. So that answer says it's negative 947 and 51 cents. So that is the exact same answer we got up above, just now it's appearing as a negative number. The reason for that is both in the calculators and if you solve the same problem in Excel, it's gonna think about it as cash inflows and cash outflows. So this is a negative number, so that we can think of that as paying $947.51, that would be a cash outflow, Then we're receiving the $50 payments and the $1,000 at the end. So those are cash inflows. So those would appear to us as positive numbers. That's the reason for the negative and the positives. So I hope you found this tutorial helpful. If you have any questions, this note sheet will be linked down below. And if you're looking for the financial calculator version of this exact same problem, I'll link to that video down below as well.